today, here comes yet more home price falls. Hello again, it's Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics, where I've noticed posts covering finance and property news with a distinctively Australian flavour. Well, January marked a new record for how much and how fast dwelling values have fallen in Australia, according to the latest from CoreLogic. Based on their monthly index, the national price is down 8.9% since peaking in April last year, making this the largest and fastest decline in values since at least 1980, when CoreLogic started recording the data. So far, Brisbane is down 10.8% and Hobart's down 10.8%, and they've registered the largest declines on record in those cities. Sydney home values are down 13.8% to the end of January, and not far from surpassing the 2017-19 drop of 14.9% to set a new decline record. CoreLogic's National Home Value Index fell a further 1% in January. That's a slight improvement on the 1.1% down recorded in December. And the smallest month-on-month -month decline since June last year. The reduction in the rate of decline was evident across most capital cities except for Adelaide, which was down 0.8%, and Perth down 0.3%, where housing values have held firmer since interest rates began rising in May. CoreLogic said, although the housing downturn remains geographically broad-based, there are signs some momentum has left the housing downturn. The quarterly trend in housing values is clearly pointing to a reduction in the pace of declines across most regions. However, at down 1% over the month and 3.2% over the rolling quarter, national housing values are still falling quite rapidly compared to previous downturns. Every capital city posted a decline in dwelling values through the month, led by Hobart down 1.7% and Brisbane down 1.4%, while the smallest drops were in Perth down 0.3% and Darwin down 0.1%. Sydney's median dwelling value dropped below $1 million for the first time since March 2021, falling 1.2% in January. That's a slight improvement on the December's 1.4% decline. The most noticeable easing in values can be seen across the premium end of the housing market, where the country's most expensive properties have led both the recent upswing as well as the current downturn. Across the combined cities, the rolling quarterly rate of decline in the upper quartile values has improved from a record low of down 6.1% over the September 2022 quarter to down 4% over the three months of January. While this trend towards improving conditions across premium markets is not evident in all cities, it's most apparent in Sydney's detached house market, they said. Quarterly declines in this market segment ease from 7.7% in the three months to August to down 3.9% in the three months of January. The improvement could be reflective of more buyers taking advantage of larger price drops across the premium sector, where house values are down about 17.4% since peaking in January 2022, CoreLogic said. Through to January, regional housing values continue to record a milder rate of decline than those in their capital city counterparts, a trend seen through most of the downturn to date. The milder decline comes after a substantially stronger upswing. Across the combined non-capital city areas of Australia, housing values surged 41.6% higher through the upswing, compared with a 25.5% rise in values across the combined capital cities. Since peaking in June, the combined regionals index is down 7.4%, while capital city values are now 9.6% below their April peak. Despite easing rates of internal migration and a partial erosion of the pre-pandemic affordability advantage, regional housing values are holding up better than capital city markets, CoreLogic said. This will be an interesting trend to watch over the longer term, but at the moment it seems regional housing markets have seen a structural shift in the underlying demand profile, with more Australians willing to base themselves outside of the capital cities and remote working remaining a viable option across some sectors of the labour force. It's unlikely we'll see a mass exodus from regional markets. However, CoreLogic stressed the importance of understanding this downturn in context. Record declines in home values follow a record upswing, both in magnitude and speed, 
The national value was up a stunning 28.6% in the space of just 19 months. Despite the recent sharp drop in values, every capital city and rest of state regions is still recording home values above pre-pandemic levels, although Melbourne's index will only need to fall a further 0.4% before equaling the March 2020 reading. Low advertised supply remains a feature of the housing market through January as the flow of new listings holds well below average for this time of year. New capital city listings added to the market over the four weeks ending January 29th were down 22.2% than over the same period last year and down 24.5% below the previous five-year average. Every capital city recorded a below average number of new listings through January, reflecting an ongoing reluctance from prospective vendors to test the market. Such a low number of new listings implies most homeowners don't need to sell, rather they seem to be prepared to wait this downturn out, CoreLogic said. This trend of lower than normal levels of new listings has been persistent through spring and early summer and looks to be continuing into 2023. Housing demand has also fallen away. Capital city dwelling sales over the past three months were estimated to be down 29.4% relative to the same period in 2022 and 11.5% below the previous five-year average. Sydney was down 40.6%, Melbourne down 39.8% and Brisbane down 36.5% and that's the largest quarterly drop in sales relative to the same period last year. At the same time, cities where home values have held firmer have also recorded much smaller falls in home sales. The rolling quarterly estimate of dwelling sales across Adelaide was only down 2.8% compared to a year ago. Perth sales were down 3.6% and Darwin home sales were estimated to be 19.6% higher, albeit with some volatility. CoreLogic said it's unlikely listings and purchasing activity will return to average levels until consumer sentiment starts to improve. There is a strong relationship between consumer attitudes and the number of home sales. With sentiment remaining around recessionary lows, it's harder for consumers to make high commitment decisions, such as buying or selling a home, until Australians have a high level of confidence with regards to their household finances and the outlook for the economy, it's likely they will continue to delay major financial decisions. The monthly pace of rental growth picked up a little in January, with national rents up 0.7% compared with the 0.6% rise in December, but they're still well below the peak monthly rental growth from May 2022, when it was 1%. The rise in the pace of rental growth was centred in the capital city markets, where monthly growth in rents lifted from 0.6% in December to 0.8% in January, and growth in rents across the combined rest of state areas reduced from 0.6% in December to 0.4% in January. Over the rolling quarter, national rents rose 2.1%, which was higher than the fourth quarter last year at 2%, but down from a recent high of 3.2% over the three months ending March 2021. After recording substantially larger increases through the worst of the pandemic, the rate of growth in house rents is generally easing in most regions, reflecting a transition of demand towards more affordable, higher density types of rental stock, CoreLogic said. In contrast, unit rents have seen a surge in rental growth over the past year. This can be attributed to a combination of affordability pressures, driving more rental demand towards cheaper rental options, and a possible reversal in rental preferences as tenants once again seek out housing options closer to the centres of amenities such as the CBD and transport hubs. It's likely a resurgence in overseas student numbers will add to rental demand over the coming months, especially in the light of the recent policy announcement in China where academic degrees and diplomas awarded from online studies will no longer be recognised. With overseas student numbers surging, it's likely that inner city rental precincts and suburbs close to universities, especially those in Melbourne and Sydney, will see a further tightening in vacancy rates and upwards pressure on rents. Inner Melbourne rents are up almost 30% over the past 12 months and inner Sydney rents are more than 20% higher than this time last year. Gross rental yields have continued to trend higher rising from an historic low of just 3.21% in February 2022 to 3.85% in January 2023. The 64 basis point recovery over the past 11 months has seen gross yields rise above the levels recorded at the onset of COVID in March 2020 at 3.76%. The trajectory of housing values remains intrinsically linked with the path of interest rates, CoreLogic said. 
The good news is that the cash rate may be approaching a ceiling as speculation mounts that inflation has moved through a peak at the end of last year. However, there is likely to be at least one more rate hike, potentially more, that will continue to erode borrowing capacity and exert additional downward pressure on housing value. There's a few clues that inflation may have peaked, as seen in the quarterly CPI numbers. While the trimmed mean remains extremely high, the quarterly growth rate reduced in the fourth quarter due in part to a sharp drop in the housing components of CPI, which carries the largest weight within the CPI basket. CoreLogic said, of course, though, they did change the weightings. And the Cordell Construction Cost Index, which measures new residential building costs, confirms the dropping cost pressures associated with new homes and major renovations in the December quarter last year. We can also see the main driver inflation has switched from non-discretionary price rises to discretionary as the recent spate of rate hikes eventually dampens consumer demand. We like to see a pullback in discretionary spending, helping to push inflation lower. Once interest rates move through a peak, it's likely that housing values will stabilise. CoreLogic said there may be a few months lag though before declines flatten out and the market would need some form of stimulus before a new growth cycle commenced. The most obvious stimulus would come from a drop in interest rates, but any cut to the cash rate probably wouldn't occur until late this year at the earliest. Other factors that could support housing activity would be a rising consumer sentiment, an easing in credit policy, such as a reduction in APRA serviceability buffer, or fiscal incentives aimed at stimulating housing demand. Some downside risk from the large number of fixed rate mortgages due to expire later this year does remain. However, two thirds of fixed rate home loans, which comprises a substantial larger proportion of the loan book than historically normal, will expire in 2023, with many moving from interest rates around 2% to rates closer to 6%. So it's likely mortgage arrears will rise from last year's record lows, but the risk of a material increase in mortgage arrears or defaults should be minimised as long as labour markets remain tight, they said. Although labour markets are expected to loosen throughout 2023, it is unlikely the employment rate will rise above long-term average levels, they said. And advertised stock levels will be a key metric to keep an eye on. Inventory levels remain well below average, mostly due to persistently low levels of fresh stock coming onto the market. Such low advertised supply has arguably helped to keep a lid on value declines, but a lift in supply without a commensurate rise in demand could prolong the downturn. With overseas migration accelerating, especially among foreign students, rental vacancies are likely to remain extremely tight in some markets, leading to further upward pressure on rents and the rental market is already in balance with vacancy rates holding around record lows. Demand side pressures are increasing, especially across the largest capitals, which have historically attracted the largest proportion of overseas migration. At the same time, there is little evidence of additional rental supply coming to market. The net outcome is likely to be a further lift in rents and a worsening in social issues associated with unaffordable accommodation costs. Now elsewhere, CBA's Head of Australian Economics, Gareth Aird, also looked at why Australian values will continue to fall, perhaps another 6%, assuming the RBA only hikes the cash rate by just 0.25% next week. But CBA said if the rate continues to tighten thereafter, as many other economists expect, then the CBA will downwardly revise its call on Australian house prices. He said, the historical lags between changes in the cash rate and the impact on home prices have shortened over the past five years. The current RBA tightening cycle is a case in point. The peak in home prices nationally was in April 2022. Dwelling prices began their descent as soon as the RBA commenced normalising the cash rate the following month in May. The rapid pace of RBA tightening has had an almost immediate impact on the demand for credit and by extension home prices. The upshot is that national dwelling prices are currently falling at a swift pace. That picture is not anticipated to change in the near term as the RBA is widely expected to lift the cash rate next week and the CBA and the consensus of economists expect the RBA to raise the cash rate by 25 basis points. The RBA does not target dwelling prices and they have made that explicitly clear. But home prices can't be divorced from the broader economy, and changes in home prices influence the economic outlook. Indeed, they are a forward-looking indicator. Changes in home price impacts wealth, consumer confidence, spending decisions and employment. 
Housing turnover also impacts spending as turnover and consumption are positively correlated. More turnover in the housing market means more spending on household goods, all else equal. The reverse is also true, and the RBA will be monitoring activity in the housing market closely for those reasons, particularly in the context of yesterday's reported big 3.9% fall in retail trade over December. In June 2022, CBA forecast national home prices were going to fall 15% peak to trough in this cycle. That forecast has remained unchanged since then, albeit in August 2022, they tweaked the timing a little for the trough to be reached in middle of 2023. They have not modified their forecast since then. Given their expectations for just one further 25 basis point rate hike, they leave their forecast for home prices to fall around 15% peak to trough in this cycle unchanged. But if the RBA does take the cash rate higher than the CBA anticipates, they will downwardly revise their call on home prices. Their narrative is quite simple on the housing front. The RBA policy decisions from here will drive the demand for credit, which in turn will influence home price outcomes. Dwelling prices will continue to slide in the short run, but if the RBA takes the cash rate lower in late 2023, as they think they will, then home prices are likely to rise and they expect the Sydney and Melbourne housing markets to be the most responsive initially to RBA rate cuts, given they were the first to enter their correction phase. But just to emphasise that point again, CBA thinks 25 basis points will do it, whereas if the RBA does lift further ahead, and that I think may be determined what happens with the Fed later this week, then of course house prices will fall further. But it is interesting that both CoreLogic and the CBA now recognise the blooming obvious, that actually home prices and the availability of credit are intrinsically linked. And if interest rates rise, credit availability is reduced, and that means that home prices fall. And the point here is that not everybody has a mortgage, but the marginal borrower is the one driving prices. If there are less borrowers and less buyers, prices will continue to fall, and they have to fall a long way to get back to long-term fair value. I'm Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. Many thanks for watching and I'll see you again next time.